Are you feeling stuck in your career? Here are some signs to watch out for to know whether or not your job is a dead end. My name is Lisa Appia. I'm a certified career strategist and personal branding consultant. And if it's your first time here, welcome. And so let's get right into it. The first sign that your job may be a dead end is that you feel like your skills are being underutilized. You feel like you have so much more to offer, but you are stuck doing very mundane tasks and that is causing you to feel undervalued at work but also it's not giving you the exposure that is necessary to be able to gain insight into how you can move up to higher opportunities and i've experienced this definitely in my career i remember when i finished my master's degree i had previous work experience from the nonprofit sector as well as the private sector but I was now in my first few positions in the public sector and as I was coming in it was basically seen like your experience doesn't mean anything <laughs> so I was put in a role that was way 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 below my qualifications and I was doing administrative very repetitive tasks and I knew that I had so much more to offer but that's where I was being boxed in and so it was up to me to take control of my career, to take charge of my career. And so I created a plan. I was like, I'm not staying here. And I needed the job, I needed the money at the time. So I created a plan in terms of an exit strategy. I gave myself a specific timeline and I ensured that I was networking beyond my current team and also seeking out opportunities. I really was being proactive about putting myself out there so I could land other opportunities. And that's how I began to land promotions and how I was able to land five promotions in less than eight years. So if you are feeling that way in terms of your skills being underutilized, that might be a sign that your job is a dead end. The next thing is that there's minimum opportunities for feedback, no performance reviews. You know, performance reviews are like the minimum. At least you know that maybe quarterly or Twice in a year, you'll get the opportunity to speak to your leadership team. But, you know, even there are no performance reviews. They don't check in on you. They just expect you to do your work, produce the results, and nobody's talking to you or nobody's giving you any feedback on what you're doing, which creates a lot of frustration. And sometimes what ends up happening is you're, you're actually the one that is making decisions and that a lot of the work falls on and there's no support. There's no one to help you. There's no one to guide you. If you're in a role that's like that, that could definitely be a dead end. And I've seen this happen with quite a number of my clients. And what ends up happening is that if they make a mistake or something goes wrong, it's a big deal and they're the person to blame. And then all of a sudden people know who they are and what they do and they wanna to talk to them. So you don't wanna put yourself in that position uh, where you're unsupported and where you are kind of putting yourself as a target if there is a potential mistake or anything like that. So you wanna make sure that the people you work with and the people you work for have your back. Another sign your job may be a dead end is that there's limited opportunity for exposure and visibility in your position. You have no opportunities to work cross-functionally. There's no opportunities for you to interact with the leadership team. Sometimes it can be because of the leader that you have that stops the flow of information in terms of what you have access to but other times it may be the organizational structure that is made in that way other times it may be a small company and there's simply just no other <laughs> opportunities beyond yours so there's different reasons why the limited exposure and limited visibility may happen but again this is where you need to take ownership of your career you need to recognize the value of building a brand that's not just based on the specific job, but allows you to attract greater opportunities outside of this role. So building your brand on LinkedIn is a great way to do that. If you are trying to do that and trying to figure out how to get started, check out this video right above. It's gonna give you insight on how to build your personal brand on LinkedIn. You are feeling trapped, you're feeling unfulfilled, there's no excitement about your job. 
you know it's a job at the end of the day i'm not expecting you to be like hey you know so 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 happy that you have to work you know it's it's labor at the end of the day but there needs to be some kind of a sense of fulfillment or some kind of motivation that comes with the work that you do. And if you know that that is completely non-existent for you, your job may be a dead end because if you're not happy about it, and if you don't show any enthusiasm about it, when opportunities do arise, people can feel your energy. If you're not into it, they know you're not into it. They're not going to give you a promotion when you're not into what you're doing right now. So it's really about you seeing where you are and recognizing what is causing it. Why are you feeling unfulfilled? Why are you feeling unmotivated about your role? It may be about the job specifically, but it may be something else as well in your life or your mental health that you need to address and that you need support with. So really take the time to assess what is the root cause of that unfulfillment or that lack of motivation and then take action. So a big one that I see a lot with the clients that I work with is invisible achievement. You're doing so much, you're putting in so much, yet there's no recognition, there's no opportunity for you to actually advance because there's almost like a glass ceiling that's not enabling you to push forward even though you are doing the work, even though you are putting the time, but you're continuously being overlooked. And this may be for different reasons from bias to just poor leadership to many many other reasons but at the end of the day what are you going to do about it if you're in this position where you recognize that there's really no opportunity for growth they're just really using you for your skills they're using you for your knowledge you're producing results but they're not making any changes in terms of giving you a raise or giving you that promotion, then are you just going to stay there another year, another two years? Are you just going to keep doing that and then complain about it? Or are you actually going to step up and take control of your career? And a lot of times people who reach out to me for career coaching services, this is the place that they find themselves. They have been putting in the work. They are the high achiever and they want to be in a place that actually recognizes the value that they bring to the table. And that should be really the bare minimum in an organization. I remember a client that I worked with, she was basically doing the job of her manager. Her manager didn't have like the finance background that was required. They were in the medical field, but there was like a finance um, work in terms of budgeting that needed to get done, but more at the managerial level. She had an MBA, so she had that background. And the manager was basically dumping the work on her. That's all that was happening. But then when they go to the meetings, that's the person who's taking the recognition. When there's opportunities to present or to share about what they're doing, that person who's the manager wants the glory, but they don't want to do the work. So those situations definitely happen at work and it's quite important that you recognize them and that you make a decision. Is this environment the kind of environment I want to stay in or am I going to look for other opportunities where my skills are valued and recognized? A few other reasons that your job may be a dead end is that you are in a toxic workplace. Whether it's a toxic colleague or a toxic boss or just the culture as a whole that is just toxic, whatever the reason may be, you are working in a toxic workplace. It's starting to affect your mental health. It's starting to affect the way that you perceive yourself and it's weighing down on you. That is a sign for sure that your job is a dead end because it's either you're going to stay in that environment or change the environment. And and changing the environment, yes, you can decide to be that person who wants to be the hero and change things and try to support people's behavior and try to organize the training and all that. But I've seen so many times people take on that role and get burnt out because the people you are reporting to or working with, they don't want to change. They've been like that for many, many years. And you think you're new to the role or you think that you have this new way of doing things that everybody should agree with and everybody should should love because it's going to help us all but they don't want to that's just how they've been and so that's another stress that you're taking on to yourself so assess again 
and determine, am I going to stay in this environment? Is this environment helping me? Is it helping my career in the long run? And make the appropriate decision to ensure that your mental health is protected. Lack of company growth. If the company is not growing, how are you going to grow at the end of the day? It could be, you know, lack of growth in the company because there are no new projects or there are uh, financial challenges or whatever it may be. But if the company you're working for is not growing, then you're not going to grow as well. So then <laughs> that is definitely a sign that your job is a dead end. And last but not least, tying in again to that mental health topic that I was just talking about is poor work-life balance in terms of your different responsibilities that you may have between your work and life generally. I don't believe that there is such a thing as work-life balance, but obviously using the term just makes you understand what I mean by it. I definitely believe that, you know, we are one person and our work doesn't form our identity. It's not that I do something at work and I'm doing something in my life. It's all integrated and that's what makes you know, business at the end of the day personal. And when you recognize that as a professional, but even as a leader, it allows you to manage differently. It allows you to uh, give your, your team more flexibility to be able to achieve what they need to achieve in their life so that they're coming to work happy, so that they're coming to work fulfilled, and that they have that support to be able to excel at work as well. And so that was a bit of a tangent on my views of work-life balance. But that being said, if you are in an environment that's the opposite of that, that basically you are working very long hours, there is no opportunity for you to actually say no to any responsibilities that are coming your way. There's so many responsibilities being dumped on you, so much expectations of you, and it's starting to affect other areas of your life. The time that you can spend with your kids, it's, it's affecting your opportunities for you to maybe volunteer or be on a board or even build your personal brand or even look for another job. You know that you need to look for a new one, but you just simply don't have the time. If you are in that situation, your job may be or is <laughs> a dead end. And sometimes it may be an intentional strategy where they want to keep you where you're at. They sometimes will feel like you're not ready or they recognize that you actually have so much to offer, but maybe you actually don't see what is the potential and the greatness that you have inside of you. So they're going to use that as almost a weapon and just keep you busy keep you busy continuously busy that you're not actually focusing on building and becoming who you are supposed to be i talked about toxic workplaces earlier on if you are someone in a toxic workplace do click here because i do share how to make an exit strategy from your toxic workplace i'll see you in that one take care